So Professor Yu Chua Shin is currently a professor in Korea Advanced Institute of Science and Technology, known as KAIS. He received his master's degree in 1996 and PhD in 2001 from Yonsei University and his postdoctoral training from National Institutes of Health in the USA. Then he joined the Graduate School of Medical Science and Engineering in KAIS in 2007, where he is currently a professor. Professor Shin Lab of Immunology and Infectious Diseases focuses on the research of T-cell response in human viral disease and cancer. Now, Professor Shin, you can um, really unmute yourself, so I will hand the stage over to you. Yeah, great, thank you. Uh, so today, <laughs> yeah, and let me start my talk. So today I'm going to talk about the T-cell response in viral hepatitis. So there are several hepatitis viruses or from, uh, let me, yeah, from hepatitis A virus and B virus and C virus. But today I start my talk with hepatitis A virus, HAV. So let me briefly introduce the HAV infection. Hepatitis A virus infection causes acute HAV, acute hepatitis A, the, the liver inflammatory, inflammatory disease. And this, unlike B and C, the acute the hepatitis A virus infection is not evolved to chronic persistent infection. It means that this HIV infection is spontaneous result without viral persistence. But importantly, this HIV infection in adult often results in severe liver injury, very high level of ALT increase. But it's already known that this the, the severe liver injury in adult patient is not induced by virus itself, but this liver injury is mediated by HIV specific T cell response, so called immunopathologic liver injury. But this kind of information was known since 20 years ago, but no one really tested this hypothesis. No one studied this kind of if this the theory is right or not, not wrong. So in Korea, several years ago, there was a small outbreak of HIV infection. Uh, taking by this, uh, this uh, chance to study HIV infection, my lab, we examined really this HIV CD T cell, they are cause of this liver injury or not. So in, that's the starting point of this study. So at the, at the beginning, so we recruited several patients, not, not only several, many patients with HIV infection at the time. And then we measured CD8 T cell activation by evaluating CD38 and HDDR double positivity among total CD8 T cell in the peripheral blood CD8 T cell. And then at the time of admission, it means that the most severe stage, the stage with the most severe liver injury, we found that the percentage of this activated CD8 T cell are very high in a acute heavy patient compared to health donor. In, in health donor, this the activated CD8 T cell percentage is near zero, less than 5%. But in this patient, in the acute staging, the percentage is really very high, even reaching the 90% in some patients. And not only this one, but also we found that the percentage of the activated CD8 T cell 38 and HDDR double positive cell among total CD8 T cell pretty nicely correlate with the serum ALT level, the degree of liver inflammation, liver injury. So with this the very preliminary data, so we found, we just concluded, oh really, the, the previous known information, maybe this the activated CD8 T cell, they are responsible for this liver injury. We, we just simply conclude that. And we confirmed that this the activated CD8 T cell, 38 and HDDR double positive cell, really proliferating, highly proliferating by chi 6 7 and they express high level of the cytotoxic molecule, purpurin and granzyme and granzyme B. But after getting this data, the, the my graduate student, but he asked this question, uh, what's the antigen specificity? All of these, the actual CD8 T cell, are they all HAV specific or not? That was a very important question. So to answer this question, we identify the minimal T cell actor in the HAV proteome, and we found that we found the three different minimal actor in HAA021 restricted one, and one actor in the HAB07 restricted one. And then we synthesized the, with a customized service the HLA class one multimer with this the, to detect HAB specific T cell. And then we applied 
this is the MH class one, the multima in the HIV infected patient. And this occupation, we successfully detected this HIV specific T cell by using this the multima. And then after gating of this the multiple positive cell, we found that all nearly not, over 90%, nearly all of them are very highly activated with the CD38 and HDDR double positive. But then at the same time, we used just unrelated virus specific multima. For example, we applied CMV multima and EBV multima and IAV influenza A virus, MH class of multima in that way we successfully detected the unrelated virus CD8 T cell in this patient. And then surprisingly, we found that after gating this uh, cell population, the virus T cell population, like in the sorry, the HDL double positivity was 76%, 78%, almost 17% in that way. So this is very unexpected activation of this uh, virus unrelated, HIV unrelated virus specific CD8 T cell. In, usually in healthy donor, this the, the solid HDL double positive is less than 5%. In this the health donor, well, CMV, EBV, influenza A virus T cell could be detected very nicely. But in the disgating, in this health donor, solid HDL, the double positive is very low. Actually, the Antonio once the, the reported this kind of the unexpected device and activation in acute hep B or acute hep C infection. But in this case, we are now studying HAV infection. And this is summary of this, the multiple staining data. In acute HAV patient, in acute stage, uh, sure, the HAV specific T cell among them, near 100% of them are highly activated. But not only this HAV the specific T cell, but also CMV, EBV, in influenza A virus specific T cell, are they also, there's some considerably they're activated. But this activation could not be observed in healthy donor, CMV, EBV influenza virus specific T cell, which are detected by multiple staining. So this is the evidence of bystander CD8 T cell activation in HIV infection. And then uh, as a next question, we ask this question, what induced this the bystander activation? How this the virus on the CMV, EBV influenza virus specific T cell could be activated without any CMV or EBV influenza virus peptide? The viral the stimulation. So we measured, I didn't include this slide in this my talk, but we measured several cytokines. We found that IL-15 is highly upregulated in this patient in the serum. And then we treat the healthy donors, the EBV or CMV influenza virus T cell with this IL-15 recombinant protein in in vitro experiment. We found that just without T cell stimulation, just IL-15 stimulation, could activate this the CMV, EBV, or influenza virus spec T cell, which obtained from healthy donor. So as evidence of activation, we examined the chi 6 7 and granzyme B, purpurin. Also, we, we also examined CD solid HDDR, and the red color showing the IL-15 treated cell. So there's the activation, even without antigen. So IL-15 can be uh, the, the cause of this device and activation. And as a next step, we the discovered very important the finding. Now, uh, by IL-15 stimulation, we found that this the uh, memory T cell can is the upregulate NKG2D, the one of the NK activating receptor. But very interestingly, this the NKG2D could not be upregulated by CD3 stimulation, but induced by IL-15 stimulation. But if we co-treat the this uh, cell with the anti cd 3 antibody and IL-15, there's no upregulation by NKG2D very unique phenomenon. So it means that the NKG to the upregulation can be a mark of the bystander activation without TCR stimulation. Because the TCR stimulation is combined with IL-15, there's no NKG to upregulation. So this is a good, the, the good marker to verify the bystander activation. So now again, after staining this the virus specific, each virus specific CDA T cell by using MH class of multiple, we examine the NKG to the expression level. So in the healthy donor, CMV spec CD8 T cell, there's not so much increase of the NKG to the, but in acute heavy patient, CMV specific and RSV spec T cell, we assume that they are bystander activated CD8 T cell, there's an increase of NKG expression. 
already in the previous slide, I told you that NKG3 can be a mark of the IL-15 induced activation without T-cell simulation. But in the same patient, in HIV spec CD8 T cell, which were detected by MH class of Multima, there's no increase of NKG2D. So we assume that because these HIV spec CD8 T cell, they are exposed, exposed to the, the combination of stimulation, not only IL-15, but also TCR stimulation because these patients are infected by HIV virus. Then, so I didn't include this slide, but we, in the paper, we showed that this device and activation, this degree of device and activation is well correlated with the serum ALT level in each patient. It means that this bias and the CDAT is there uh, contributing to the liver injury in this HIV infected patient. And then as next step, we examine how this bias and activation CDAT is there can kill hepatocyte in this patient even without the, the viral peptide, the CMV or EBV or flu peptide at the target cell. So to answer this question, my grad student, he hypothesized that even without peptide, after peptide, this T cell can kill hepatocyte by exerting innate light cytotoxicity. It means that even without the cognate after, they can kill the target cell by using more NKG2D or other NK activating receptor, like NK cell. So we tested this hypothesis by performing the cytotoxic assay against K562 cell. K562 cell is a typical NK target cell and they don't express the HIV class one. So they cannot be killed by the conventional TCR activation because they lack HIV class one activation, the expression. So we isolate the CDA T cell from each patient and health donor, the purely isolate, the avoiding the NK cell contamination and we co-culture them with the K562. In his donors, the CDAT cell could not kill K562, uh, but the CDAT cell isolated from the acute HIV patient could kill the, the K562. And even we purify CMV space CDAT cell by using CMV specific HLA class of multiple staining, and then perform K562 cytotoxic assay. And then we found that this the patient drive. CMV spec T cell readily kill K562 cell. It means that NK light, innate light, cytotoxic T of this the bystander activated CDA T cell. And then in the additional analysis, we found that this K562 cytotoxic T of purified CDA T cell well correlate with the patient serum ALT level. It indicates that this cell, the NK light cytotoxic T, may contribute to the liver injury in this the acute have a patient. And as the next step, we want to verify, identify what kind of NK activating receptor are responsible for this NK like cytotoxicity. And uh, the, we found that NKG2D and NKP30, the both NK activating receptor upregulated in the, the bystander activated CDAT cell. And then we perform blocking of that. So when we perform again K560, the target cell killing of that. And then we, in this time, we added blocking antibody. And in this case, NKG2D and NKP30 blocking antibody could abrogate this uh, NK like killing activity and by com combination, more perfectly abrogate this uh, activation. It means that NKG2D and NKP30 are responsible for this innate like cytotoxicity of bystander activity the AT cell. So this paper was published exactly three years ago. And this summary of this slide, the, during HIV infection, IL-15 reproduced, and then it will activate pre-existing non-HIV specific bystander cell. Then they will upregulate NKG to the NKP30. Then by using this the NK activating receptor, this the bystander activated CDAT cell can kill hepatocyte by inatalized cell toxicity. And also we show that this killing activity will be will target not only a virus infected cell, but also normal hepatocyte. In this way, liver injury will be induced. This was the, the, our story, which was published in Immunity three years ago. But then for five or six minutes, I'll show you our next story. So you may know that the recently the tissue raised memory T cell, the TRM, has been highlighted in T cell biology. But after the publishing this immunity paper, so we want to know that. So in the immunity paper, we just examined the peripheral blood CDA T cell 
as IL-15 responding T cell. Then, but, but in HIV model, the liver cell is the main responding cell, major responding cell. So we decided to look at the liver TRM. So TRM is very important for the rapid recall response. So anyway, so the, we examine the TRM cell as IL-15 responding cell. And then to do that, so I used the liver sinusoidal, the mononuclear cell. The, like five or six years ago, when Antonio was invited by me, then visited to Korea, in that time, Antonio they recommend to use this uh, liver sinusoidal mononuclear cell for the research of the liver immunology. So owing to Antonio's recommendation, so since six years ago, we obtained this liver sinusoidal mononuclear cell. So in Korea, there are many liver transplantation cases. So in, during liver transplantation, donor liver, donor liver will be perfused to remove liver sinusoidal mononuclear cell. So it will be discarded, but we obtain this one, then we examine this uh, some uh, TRM feature or liver resident feature of a T cell using this kind of a very unique material. So at the beginning, we examined the CD69 part of the cell because the stereotype mark of the TRM is 669 and CD103 part of double positivity. So initially we examined C69 positivity. Uh, really in the intrasinusoidal area, there's C69 positive CD8 T cell. And then we found that the C69 positive cell have a down regulation of KF2 and S1PR1 by real-time PCR. So this is a typical characteristic of a TRM. And then now we again, we look at the CD69 and CD103 double positivity. And we found that in the liver compartment, liver sinusoidal mononuclear cell, C among C69 positive cell, minor population is CD103 double positive, the stereotype of TRM. But major dominant population is CD69 positive, but CD103 negative. But the meanwhile, so Marla Mining Group in UK, they reported that this the C69 positive, CD103 double positive, this the liver sinusoidal T cell have a real feature of TRM, T cell memory T cell. So uh, since this the publication by Marla Mining Group, my group, we focused on C69 positive, one of the negative T cell population, more dominant population in terms of the number. And we found that well, CXR3, uh, 6 and CD49A, a typical mark of the TRM, they are the overexpressed by C69 positive cell not in 6-9 negative cell, but within these 6-9 positive population, one of three positive cell, more typical TRM cell, have a higher level of this the 49A or CXL6. But one of three negative cell, they have still higher expression of the, this CXL6 and C49A compared to 6-9 negative cell, although the expression level was lower than one of three positive cell. So it means that, one of the negative 6-9 positive cell kind of between the not, not typical stereotype of TRM cell, but have, have some share, some feature of TRM. And at this moment, we want to see the viral specificity by using MH multimer. How about C6-9 positive, CD103 positive and negative in that way. First, we apply CMV pentamer or I, the influenza A virus pentamer in the ribosinusoidal the mononuclear cell. After gating of this the multiple, the pentamer positive cell, we look at 6, 9, and 1, 3 negative positivity. In the case of CMV and IAV, they are non hepatotrophic virus. In this non hepatotrophic virus, like CD8 T cell, there's no CD103 positivity, positive cell, only CD69 positive, 1, 1, 3 negative cell. So in the case of non hepatotrophic viral infection, in the liver compartment, there's no stereotype of TRM cell, CD69 and one of the double positive cell. But how about HBV? For this study, we used HBV infected liver, the HBV infected patient liver pop state. In this case, we used HBV pentamer. When we, we gate this HBV pentamer and we examine 69 and 103. In this single case, patient case, around 50% of them were 69 and one of the double positive cell. In the case of a hepatotropic virus per CD8 T cell, we a huge number of these CL cell will have stereotype of TRM feature. But this the percentage was very variable depending on patient. Some patient 90%, the other patient were 10% like that. 
And even in the same HBB specific, the pentamer positive cell, one of three negative cell have much more terminally differentiated, more senescent feature. It means that one of three negative cell are more terminally differentiated, more the aged T cell. And then and doing the RNA seq analysis, we found that HIF2 alpha is the, one of the major regulators of this the, the liver resident T cell. So a pass one is the mRNA gene name for HIF2 alpha. There are specific regulation of CD39 positive cell in this cell population. And also we found that by fat staining, HIF2 alpha more the specifically upregulated in one of the negative cell population, not positive cell population. So we found that HIF2 alpha is the major the regulator of this the C69 positive, but one of the negative cell population. And then, yeah, so um, two more minutes. And the, in this experiment, we simulate them in vitro by using IL-15. And we still are responding much better upon IL-15 simulation. In terms of proliferation, CD103 positive cell proliferate very well compared to one of the negative cell population upon IL-15 stimulation. But NKG to the upregulation was comparable between two population. And after IL-15 stimulation, we co-culture them with the K562. And the CD103A is a degradation marker for cytotoxic activity was much higher in CD103 positive cell population. So per cell basis, CD103 positive cell uh, much more responding to IL-15 kind of vitamin activation, I can say that. But when we gave CD137A positive cell, then to, among total CD137A positive cell, still 103 negative cell population is a dominant population because in this the C69 population, 103 negative population was the much more dominant population at the beginning the, in terms of number. So this still, they can contribute this kind of the innate like cytotoxicity. And then finally we use hif alpha inhibitor. There are some small chemical inhibitor named PT23 and ADBAR5. And when we add this PT molecule to suppress hif alpha, this NK-like cytotoxic activity, which was upregulated by IL-15, could be abrogated, partially abrogated. So in this way, we found that the hif alpha, by regulating hif alpha, we can suppress this bystander killing activity, NK like killing activity. So kind of pharmacologic, some possibility. And then finally, we found that this, the, the CD69 positive, CD103 negative cell population, their activation and their proliferation and their hip type activity, the expression level is much higher in liver cirrhosis patient. And there is the hip type level well correlate with the disease progression of the liver cirrhosis. It means that more severe liver stroke patient have much higher level of hip type expression in this the 69 positive ones in the cell population. There's some relations with the, the liver disease. This is my final slide. So this is the this story, hip type story was published last year. And in addition, last year we again also published the mate cell, the innate like T cell, they can be also activated by IL-15 and they can exert TCR independent innate tract cell toxicity by mediation of NKG to the very similar story. So mate cell also can contribute to the liver injury in acute heavy patient. So this is the, all my story. And the first story immediate paper was the, the read by the, my PhD student, the now doctor, Ji Hae Kim. And second story was the mainly performed by Dr. Jong Un Kim in my lab with the collaboration with the, clinical hepatologist in Korea. Yeah, thank you for your attention. Yep, thank you so much, Professor Shin. Thanks for those, sharing those wonderful data. So um, now, now uh, Professor Shin uh, will be happy to um, take some questions. So if there's any questions, you may raise your questions. Uh, we have um, one from, we have one from Jeremy. Jeremy, why uh -huh. not uh, let's unmute you and then you can ask your question directly. Oh, yeah, yeah, I can, yeah, I can. Yeah, uh, let Jeremy, me, let right? me. Yeah, you can read. Yeah, Edmund, question. Yeah, let me hmm. ask to unmute. I, I will, I will, <laughs> yeah. Jeremy asked about that. How about CD4 T cell? So how about yeah. this the HIV spec CD4 T cell, class restricted one? In our study, we didn't study this. We didn't look at CD4 T cell, the class restriction. So once the Chris Walker, Chris Walker in Ohio, 
they look at CD4 T cell response in chimpanzee model of H3 infection, and CD4 T cell well correlate with the disease cause. So they suggest that HIV specific for T cell, what which were evaluated not by the multiple staining, but by well, at least part of ICS or functional study, so they can contribute to protection by the clearance in this chimpanzee model once they hear the published there. Yeah, thank you very much. That's really interesting. Um, I, I mean, how many are there many epitopes as well described in relation to the class two? Um, oh, class two. Yeah, in the human yeah. patient, yeah, nothing, nothing. <laughs> actually, when we start this, the, our immunity paper study, actually even not single class one epitope was identified in HIV protein. So mm -hmm. by ourselves, we mapped this the minimal epitope, so we found the four epitope, but in, so far, no one mapped class two epitope, so nothing known about that, yeah, so far. Yeah. Great, if I may just ask one more question, Edmund. Um, yes. Just, it was just actually in relation to how you did the mapping of the class one epitopes for the HAV. Um, what method were you using? Was it more like a functional screen using Ellispot or what, what kind of approach? Yeah, yeah. So actually, initially by using NetMHC, we just uh, predicted HLA-A20, HLA-B07, B27 binder. And then by Ellispot assay, we just by wet job, yeah, real say we confirm and validate. Yeah. Oh, great. It sounds like it's a whole other story. It sounds very interesting. Mm -hmm. Yep. Th thank you, Jeremy, for the question. So we have another question from, uh, from Antonio. So um, I have, uh, I think Antonio uh, Henry posted his question on the chat. Ah, so he's yeah. asked, yeah, do you try to study hepatic flash in HBV chronic patients and see the contribution of bystander T cell activation there? Yeah, actually, very nice question. And I guess that Antonio, he actually published a similar story several years ago in Plus Pathogen about acute Hep A and acute Hep C. But this is a very important question, the chronic HBV patient in the case of acute hepatic flare. Now we are collecting patient sample, but not so common. So we, we so far, we didn't examine the sample, but now we are collecting sample, so we can answer this question like, next year or 2023, 20, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, great question. Yeah, yeah great. Mm -hmm. So are there um, any, any other questions from the audience? You can either uh, put it on the chat or you can raise your hand and I can unmute you for you to ask your questions directly to Professor Chin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then Yes. So, so actually, I have um, one question for, for myself, because you mentioned oh. about um, using the pentamer to stain the um, levosinusoidal, right? So I was just thinking that because you use the uh, field cytometry to do the staining, right? Is there any kind of um, plans in terms of the strategy of doing uh, immunohistochemistry staining using the pentamers instead? Oh, uh, yeah. In my lab. So uh, we technically, we are very good at the flow cytometry, but we are not so good at the immunohistochemistry. So we never try this stuff. Uh, Pentamer staining using the immunized chemistry. We never tried that. <laughs> yeah, we never right, then. Yeah. Then so, so another question. So another question is, so what sort of difference um, do you expect like in terms of doing a flow cytometry method in terms of looking at it and compared to immunohistochemistry, do you expect to have any kind of difference in terms of looking at the antigen specific T cells? Oh yeah, honestly, already I told you that I don't have any experience in this chemistry for the MH class one or multimer, uh, but I uh, sure. Yeah. So like other some protein one, there are some pro and con. The flow cytometry, the much more robust, some uh, you know, in the high multi-parameter analysis, but in the case of yeah. this chemistry, not so many more parameter can be combined. But right. in the case of this chemistry, we can get some idea about the uh, the microenvironment, the location information in terms of the microenvironment. So next to the more portal triad or not, in, the, in that way. So the pro and con is very obvious. <laughs> yeah, right. I can right. say that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah because we, we do have a couple of papers that we see that, uh, that have been pub published that actually use our pentamers to do immuno um, histochemistry to, to, and yeah. they generate quite a, quite a number of good staining data. So I thought that it might be, uh, if it's something of your interest, right, we can actually share those papers to you and then see yeah. how um, you can actually deploy them. If yeah, I can remember that one of the seminar paper 
for the immunized chemical application of the MH class of Multimer was done when 1998 or 9 or 2000 like that by Marla Maini. And Antonio was also one of the course, I, I guess that in published by JX Matt, no? Maybe some non HBV specific accumulation of the, the T set. No? I, yeah, I'm not I, sure. <laughs> I, I think I think it's a, I think it's uh, not non it's not something it's not something to do with viral hepatitis. But I I need to go I need to find that um paper. Uh -huh. They are working on um, EB, EBV specific CD cells instead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah EBV. Yeah. 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 For example, for the application. Yeah. Yeah. So it's so it's a group done by Serafini uh, in 2019 that they published a paper using the pentamers to do some of these yeah. immunohistochemistry staining. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Just meantime, yeah, one more question. I was going to so say, if I, I can jump in, there's one more question, yep. yeah. Yeah, Juan Dijo, yeah, he asked about, uh, yeah, can you use anti-IL-15 inhibitor to minimize liver inflammation in HIV clinically? Very good point. So, yeah, possible, possible. But clinically, have a HIV infection is not so important disease because self-limited disease. So we don't need to develop this kind of very more expensive anti antibody drug. But instead of that, now we are looking for other diseases, other more important diseases, which need the new drug development. So uh, today, I will not say the, the, the name of the disease, but in that disease, I think that same kind of mechanism is operating. In that disease, we can use anti-IL-15 antibody as a you know, the blocking therapy to minimize liver inflammation. Great, yeah, thank you. <laughs> oh, and one more. Oh, one more. Mm. Ah, yeah, Antonio, the biotin activation in, of T cell in COVID-19, initially at the beginning of COVID-19, we, we tested this hypothesis, but very different. So actually in COVID-19, CMV, EBV, sometimes there's a little bit increase of C-storied HADR, double positivity, but in the continuous work, so not so much very minimal level of bystand activation. And there was another one that I think you missed from uh, Yu Jun Yun. Um, when oh, T cells yeah, yeah. activated without TCR engagement in HIV, those activated T cells are usually clonal? Oh yeah, good question, yeah. So as you can expect, not clonal, very polyclonal. Yeah, we can say it, yeah. 